with the industry-wide secret butchers don't want you to know about. Major suppliers have been caught using a special product known as meat glue to stick together scraps of meat to sell as prime cuts. But while this product has been banned overseas, there's no law prohibiting its use here. Here's Rodney Lowe's with this special investigation. It's the meat industry's dirty secret, a way of turning the scraps too small to sell as a premium steak back into a juicy, plump eye fillet to sell for a premium price. So clever, you'll never tell. Not even an expert can. Before, you didn't even pick that as a joint, though, did you? It doesn't even tear through the joint. Bit hard to tell, isn't it? Butcher James Faulkner runs Queensland Natural Beef Company. An organisation dedicated to using as few additives in meat from paddock to plate as possible. But tonight, he's exposing how some parts of the industry are able to trick their customers and use whatever it takes. I've just got some uh, fine diced diced beef and my uh, special enzyme. I'm just going to mix it up a bit. Why have we got the masks on? This is dangerous. <laughs> See that? Don't breathe that in. This powder is transglutanamase enzyme, otherwise known as meat glue. Meat glues come in a number of forms, some produced by cultivating bacteria, the others, the primary ingredient comes from the blood plasma of pigs and cattle, specifically the coagulant which causes blood to clot. In the food industry, it has amazing properties. So just got a little bit here, about a teaspoonful. Yep. Just over the top like that, and with our gloves on, of course, we mix it up. Then roll it in plastic film and refrigerate. Six hours later, you have a solid piece of meat. And essentially, you've got a reborn, rebirth thigh fillet. More or less, yeah. Ours uncooked is easy to spot the difference, but cooked is another story. OK, so the uh, meat glue one is on the right, and the real McCoy is on the left. And it's not just beef. Pork, lamb, fish and chicken are all stuck back together using this glue. It looks like one piece of chicken. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yep. But hard to tell, isn't it? Particularly that. On the grill, it's even harder to pick. So that's the real McCoy. Give this a burl. Nice and tender, nicely salted. All right, let's go for the meat glue. I can't tell the difference. Pretty good, but potentially dangerous. I've sort of got two concerns. One that is well publicised, which is misleading people. The other area is the microbial side. It's why the European Union moved to ban meat glue in May last year. Microbiologist Glenn Pinner. If this food is sold or represented as a solid piece of steak, and you cook it rare, you're really leaving yourself open um, to get food poisoning. Once you glue two pieces together, it's difficult to cook thoroughly those parts that were on the outside, but are now on the inside. The amount of bacteria on a steak that has been put together with meat glue is hundreds of times higher. We had no idea how guarded a secret this was until we started contacting restaurateurs and butchers to ask them about the use of meat glue. Many of them didn't want to speak for fear of upsetting their suppliers, creating bad blood in an industry that has become very clever at using this product. Are you just shaking your head? <laughs> a little bit. It's unbelievable, isn't it? This cube roll we bought from a wholesaler that produces stuck-together steaks en masse. Their efforts so good, James, our butcher, couldn't tell even when it was raw. It's even harder in the restaurant, which are some of the biggest users of glued meat. And chances are, unless you're a vegetarian, you're eating it on a regular basis. But with current labelling laws, neither butchers nor your local eatery have to tell you you're eating chicken glued together with cow's blood or beef held together by pig. 
It's the same reason they can take low-grade meat and pump it with water and flavour to make it edible. OK, so just after about a minute or two, we've got quite a lot of moisture out of there. And we've lost almost half a kilo. Then the practice of selling mutton as lamb and old cow as prime cut beef. Like this, so old, a meat grater said it was only good for pet mints. You've got yellow fat colour, really dark meat colour. It's definitely off a really old type of animal. In New South Wales, new labelling regulations have just been introduced to help consumers choose quality meat, but it's not compulsory. So for most of us, picking a quality piece of meat is still a shot in the dark.